SC. The SC joint. SC joint is a real fun one. It is sterno. Sound like sternum, right? Clavicular. So, SC. Not Southern California. I know you think it might be USC, but it's not. It's sternoclavicular joint. And it's right here. You have one on each side. Okay? So, relatively uncommon, but yes, they can occur mainly from falling on the shoulder or direct below to the SC joint. You get hit here, you fall on the shoulder, the clavicle doesn't break, the force will finally find the weak place, and the weak place might be here. All right? So, grade one, you got a little bit of pain and disability, some point tenderness, and no deformity. All right. Grade two, if you sprain this, is going to be a subluxation of the SC joint with visible deformity, pain, swelling, point tenderness, and inability to abduct the shoulder in full range of motion or bring the arm. Obviously, this is going to hurt because we're pushing then the clavicle in and at the sprain, it's going to pull on those ligaments that are torn. So bringing this across is certainly going to hurt. All right. Go over there. Part three or grade three. Severe, severe and with complete dislocation, you go have a gross displacement, which means ew, it's gross. Okay. Of the clavicle at its sternal junction, you have swelling, disability, indicating complete rupture of the SC and the costoclavicular ligament. If this place posteriorly, think of this. So, here this, this joint is right here. What is posterior to it? Huh? Yes. So, it's not. You don't know, you sit there and put your thumb over here and start pushing in because you have a not real fun, right? So if it's displaced posteriorly, the pressure may be placed on the blood vessels, the esophagus, or the trachea, causing the life or death situation. Grab the clavicle and pull it forward. Yes, it's going to hurt them, but better that than death. So rest, ice, compression, elevation. Position, absolutely, to reduce any displacement. All right, you are out probably six weeks. High, and once you have it, there's high incidence of reoccurrence of your SC. So make sure you check your medical histories of your athlete. Now, the chromioclavicular, we talked about the chromium process, sticks up and over. And it's part of the shoulder blade. And then the clavic or the collarbone or clavicle comes over to meet it. And that helps keep the humerus from coming up. Very vulnerable joint joint. Certainly see several of them a year in football. I bet we probably had six this year. Three of them I think were heart were um, enough damage to where you see it take the orthoplast. We build that cup and put it around there and then put that donut in it. No? You haven't ever seen this. Okay. Most often induced from a direct blow. Boom. I force the chromium process down and then the clavicle stays. So, may also be injured when an upward force is exerted against the long axis of the humerus by a fall on an outstretched arm. Meaning, I'm running with the ball, I get tackled, boom. I hit the ground, the force comes up, forces the humerus to push the clavicle up away from the AC. Now I've got a separated shoulder from this blow going up as opposed to this coming down. So you can't, there's not just one little mechanism of injury that you say, oh, well that's it. There are several because this joint is um, prevalent to injury from both directions. So you prevent proper fitting shoulder pads. All right, conditioning to provide a balance of strength and flexibility to the entire shoulder complex and teaching proper falling down. So as opposed to landing on your elbow, tuck your elbow. 
Go ahead and land on your whole side. Tuck and roll. You'll roll the, 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 the energy away as opposed to abruptly stopping your energy. Contusion to the distal end of the clavicle can be mistaken for a grade one AC sprain. So if you get a bruise out here, okay, as opposed to people that, oh, it's got to be an AC sprain. Be real specific when you're palpating or touching someone to find the injury. Is it actually on the ligament or is it on the bone itself? Be specific. Is it on the deltoid muscle? All right. There are different grades in an AC sprain. Let's see how many we have here. Two, four, five, six. All right. Six different grades. So, I would imagine that you're probably going to see these six different grades. Point tenderness, discomfort uh, during movement, no disruption of the joint, indicating only a very mild sprain to the acromioclavicular and coracoclavicular ligament. All right. Out here, you have the acromioclavicular, the, uh, the acromion process, and then there's a smaller one over here called the coracoid process. So, those two ligaments are both tugging on the clavicle to hold it in place. First one on the outside, farther out is the AC joint. So, it's going to go first. But if you don't have any disruption, it's your grade one. Grade two, you got some tearing or rupture of the AC and it's associated stretching of the coracoclavicular ligament. Partial displacement and prominence on the lateral end of the clavicle when compared to the uninjured side. You've got to look at these folks when they come in, and you're going to have to say, well, you pull your shirt up, you pull your sleeves in, whatever you've got to do so that way you can see these on their shoulder. They're right out here. And you'll see one here, and then you'll see the other one up about a quarter of an inch or so. And now you know you've got at least a grade one. Point tenderness during palpation, during touching. And the athlete is unable to abduct through the full range of motion. This hurts. So, grade three, complete rupture of the acromioclavicular and coracoclavicular ligament. You're going to see more displacement. Okay? Let's find that um, shoulder over here. Here's our AC. It's right out here, right up here. The chromium process is here. The coraco process is down underneath. But here we go. Here's our AC ligament, our CC ligament. So we start to tear this, great. And then if we start to just, so this gets wider, and then we start to tear this. Once they're both gone, obviously this is going to be able to come up higher. And you're going to see that, not only in x-rays, but you'll actually see it when that person stands in front of you and you go, whoa, what's that bump over there? Well, you know your anatomy? It's your AC joint. So an anterior dislocation displays a flattened del a deltoid contour. So instead of it being round on the shoulder for the muscle, it flattens out. Athlete will carry the arm in slight abduction and external rotation. Unable to touch the opposite shoulder. This is a dislocation. How do we get this far ahead? All right, great. Four. Exhibit the posterior dislocation of the clavicle with a complete disruption of the AC ligament. Some grade four sprains will have the coracoclavicular ligament still intact. Now, Now what happens is, is that the clavicle is coming back. Not a fun deal. Get this by getting hit straight on your clavicle. Rip, rupture this ligament, this goes back. This ligament could actually be still intact. That's the difference between three and four. You have a post 
superior dislocation. All right? Five, complete loss of both of these ligaments. This great big ligament and this little ligament are now gone. Okay? In addition to tearing that, you're going to tear some of your deltoid muscle that's up over the top and your trap muscle. Uh, gross deformity and prominence of the distal clavicle in. All right, severe pain, loss of movement, and instability of the shoulder complex. This one is super rare in athletic setting. It involves the clavicle being displaced inferior. Now, when we say inferior, that means it's going down. So this displacement then is down here, as opposed to being back. Posteriorly, this actually comes down. When you see that it's down or inferior, the coracoid, inferior to the coracoid behind the coracobrachialis tendon. So this is falling down. You're not going to see that. And if you've got somebody has it, it's going to hurt so much that you're going to send them to the hospital anyway. You're going to want extra. So how you manage it, big, three big things. You're going to have cold and pressure to, cold to control your local hemorrhage. Stabilize the joint with a sling. Put a sling on. If it makes them comfortable, then you're doing the right thing. All right? Refer to a physician for definitive diagnosis. Because when you see these, all right, here's a right AC joint. There is space in between the bones. Now let's look at the left. Look at how much more space there is. So then they're going to be able to tell definitively how much is torn. Now, we'll take the orthoplast, you know, the white sheet that we put in the hydroculator and it gets hot and then you're able to mold it. Well, you take it and you put it over, over their shoulder and then you make a cup over the AC joint. I like to take it to where I make that cup and I'll take a finger and I'll... My clavicle is also suspect to making me hurt, so I'll make a tunnel all the way to the cup, and then you can tape it on their shoulder. Now, when you're taping them on their shoulder, you're not using free wrap. It is straight to skin, and it's going to hold in place. If you put the free wrap, it's going to move around. There are some store-bought uh, protective devices that you can put on, and it just straps around. But to me, they don't. They don't stay in place well enough. Two, it's also just the, the, the round raising above the AC, and it does not have the tunnel. Because if I push on the clavicle, well, that's where we hurt. It's the clavicle that's moving around. So if you've got a mild AC sprain, you can manage that as far as playing a football, hockey, or whatnot. If you've got grade three, four, five, or six, you're not going to be able to manage it. They're going to have to take the time to heal. So, management grade one, use the sling for three or four days. They're probably going to play, but you keep them out of practice. They need to be down at practice so they know what's going on in your game plan. Grade two, they're going to might miss a game, maybe two. 10 to 14 days of protection and also wearing a sling. Grade three, non-operative with approximately two weeks and a sling. Four, five, and six certainly might need some surgery to put that, to hold, sew those ligaments back together, put it back in the correct place, so that way things aren't healing in the wrong spot. Like I tell kids that come in, they say, well, I, I don't need to go to the doctor, I'm, going, I'm getting better. Well, yeah, you're going to feel it getting better. The pain goes away. But is it healed in the right place? And if it's not healed in the right place, you're going to end up tearing that again. And it's because it's not put back together in the right place. All right? And sometimes internal fixation means that they surgically will put a device, either wire or screws or pins, to hold that clavicle exactly where it needs to. They can go back in later and take those out. All right, shoulder dislocation. Now, 
We're looking at shoulder dislocations, but you've heard of a separated shoulder? Is it the same thing as a dislocated shoulder? What's the difference? You knew that was coming, huh? We just got done talking about a separated shoulder. Dislocated. Humerus is out. Separated shoulder is actually AC sprains. So what we just talked about is a separated shoulder. Now when you hear about, well, Ben Roethlisberger is going to play with a separated shoulder on his non-throwing arm, and you're thinking, oh, he's so brave. Well, that's because you didn't know the difference between a separated shoulder and a dislocated shoulder. And so they say those things, because 90% of the public is going, oh, his shoulder came out last week, and he's going to play. No, his shoulder didn't come out. He sprained his AC joint. Okay? Dislocation, entirely different. End up down here. End up over here and caught over here. Every now and then, you get it where you get a posterior dislocation. Where it ends up. It doesn't go on the other side of this stuff. This stuff pairs with it and goes with it. Okay? But at this, so, separated shoulder, dislocated shoulder. All right? Don't get those two confused. Now, this one here, he would be a big, brave man. Dislocated shoulder, an anterior glenohumeral dislocation. Well, we know what. The word after the third word, gleno, humeral, right? And we know that when we talk like this, we're talking about bones, places, etc., or directions. So, what bone is, is being involved? You know, one of them for sure, the humerus. All right. On the scapula, we open all that up. You see this right here. Okay, that is the glenoid. Fossa, F O S S A. The glenoid fossa is where the head, the head of the humerus, is going to naturally stay when it's healthy. Just cruises around. All right? Anybody play golf? Anybody ever watch somebody play golf? All right? I'm on T number one, and it's a par five, which means I got five shots to go, what, 450 yards. So I'm going to break out the big dog, right, and knock that ball as far as I can. But before I can hit the ball, I've got to do what to the ball? Put it on a tee. Well, here we are. Here's my golf tee, and there's the golf ball. Essentially, that's what you got. You got a golf ball on a golf tee. And what we need to do is keep the ball on the tee. All right? Got it? All right. Remember that. We'll come back to that here in a bit. But the glenohumeral the gleno, gleno joint is right in here where it fits all together. These are all tendons and attachments for your rotator cuff muscles. It may result. So an anterior dislocation where it comes out forward may result from a direct impact to the back or to the posterior or posterior lateral or it's on the side, but not straight to the side, but it would be that south, that'd be southwest. Got it? All right, the most common mechanism is forced abduction and external rotation. So, if you want, find somebody with a loose shoulder and we can pull it out. Force it out this way. Extension that forces the humeral head out of the glenoid cavity. If you just do this with me, feel how your shoulder feels. It's not going to hurt, but it's not comfortable. You're going to do those three things. Abduction, right, where the humerus just comes out. At the same time, you are going to externally rotate, which means bringing your 90-degree elbow out. And then, as we're doing that, we're going to do it as we're coming forward, okay? So, let's take your shoulder, your, your hand, and go like this. Go forward, external, and up. Can you not feel that in the back? 
Huh? Come. I'll show you. Abduction. <laughs> My shoulder is popped. I know. Ow. Is that your shoulder popping? Yes. All right, well, you're done with that. <laughs> it's not normal. No. Okay? Abduction is normal. External rotation is normal. And, of no, course, flexion is normal. But let's, when we start doing all of it together, we can get we can get into a bind and it ends up dislocating. Now, while we're doing it, let's put force behind it. While I'm doing this, I'm going to push behind here. That's not normal. Okay? The posterior glenohumeral dislocation. Now, that's for an anterior, which means that this comes out to the front. Posterior dislocation is usually forced adduction, internal rotation. Okay? So, adduction, internal rotation. And, or on a fall of an extended or internally rotated arm. Somebody's coming to the sideline, they rotate it in and fall. And now it goes out the back. The anterior dislocation displays a flattened deltoid contour. So instead of seeing a nice smooth muscle, oh, is, that the next, is that the next one? Instead of seeing a smooth muscle, you start seeing some divots and stuff in that shoulder. And you're going, oh, wow, that's not, that's not normal. Okay? So in the anterior, it comes out like here. It comes, shoulder comes around and then whomp. And then it continues around. All right, and the pictures of that picture is a posterior dislocation. So the athlete will carry his arm, slight abduction, external rotation, unable to touch. Now here's the other deal. And so you tell them that you want them to, to do the pledge of allegiance, tell them to cross their heart. I want you to touch your other shoulder. Okay, they've got an anterior dislocation. They can't do this. They cannot touch that. They're also not getting up here. Okay, there's moderate pain and disability. Posterior dislocation produces severe pain and disability. The arm is often held in adduction in internal rotation. The anterior deltoid muscle is flattened. The acromion and coracoid processes here are prominent. All right, and limited external external rotation and limited elevation so they can't get out here all right if you can get them to get there you're probably they'll probably get it in place now we had a ball game two years ago where the one running back dislocated his shoulder do you remember yes it was it was and it took 20 minutes all right so what happens well these muscles Remember way back, this couple of years ago, muscle guarding or muscle splinting? So it comes out, goes here, and the muscles go, no, I don't want you going any farther. Get back over here. So it pulls on it. Well, it doesn't get it in. But it actually also won't let it come out enough to come back into the joint. And so you start getting some muscle splinting, and he stuck. All right? Immediate immobilization in a comfortable position using the sling with a folded towel or small pillow placed right here underneath the arm. All right? Have the physician reduce it. Now, you also need to get x-rays. Even if you are able to reduce it in the training room or it falls in back by itself, you still need to get x-rays because you can chip a piece off of that humeral head so if the, you get a piece of this that chips off when it comes out, right? You got a floating piece of bone in there, you're going to have problems. So you need to know about that. Get an x-ray. It's the best $100 in medicine. And then it's time for reconditioning the shoulder. So you got to strengthen all the muscles around the shoulder joint. This is this here is internal rotation. It's not about this. It's not about from the elbow to the hand. It's about the humerus. 
So this is internal rotation. The humerus is rotated this way. This is internal rotation. All right? So whether you're doing it here or you're doing it here, this is safer in this position because I'm not out away from the body, but that's internal rotation. External rotation, I can do this, or what else could I do? But from here to here, external rotation, what else could I do? Here to here is external rotation. All right? All right, long head of the bicep. Now, your bicep muscle, you know, it's your beach muscle. I take this jacket, I can just rip through it. Um, your bicep or beach muscles, okay? That long head goes not just to here, it goes way up in here, in through a groove, and actually all the way across the humeral head. It is long, all right? So you need to worry about taking care of it, making sure that it is comfy, stretched, and flexible, and pliable. And so we do that by, um, we got, one. okay, I need one person to do it with me, and then the four of you will do it. So come on. Come. I'm going to show them a long head of the bicep stretch. Find a doorway. Find another one here. All right. Well, I'm going to do my left hand. You guys can do your right because, huh? Yeah. Well, you can do it either way. If he would move, the two people could be right there, there and there. Um, anyway, you just put your hand here. All right. Then you go here. You face the opposite way your hand is. Then, you squat. Now, that's step one. Okay? Step two is act at the level of your head. Right here. Looks like if you had a hat, you take it off, put it here. You're a little tall. Then you do the same thing. And you can get, you'll feel that even closer or stretch even before you just stoop down. Try it. You need to try it. Feel it. And when you get done, your shoulders like going, wow, that's not bad. Like, ah. <laughs> I feel it like right here. I feel it like right here. Yeah. You feel it right here? Feel that there? I feel it right here. Yeah. I don't even know if it's Well, it ends down. It ends across the joint across the joint line. It has to be across the joint line to pull it up for that muscle. It is. All right. So what else do we have? They say you need to wear a harness when you play afterwards as far as the dislocation. Now know this. Once you dislocate a shoulder, are you able to dislocate it again? Uh, you're, yeah, probably a 50% higher incidence of dislocating it a second time. Once it comes out a second time, you pretty much can expect that sucker's going to come out. In your sleep, yeah, you put your arm up and you think it's not ready. <gasps> oh, it's out. Oh, but it'll go right back in. Yes. So, we've got, we'll have some pictures on that. Now, this is the super, super duper stuff here. It's a rotator cuff. You've heard of it, right? You've got to have heard of it, right? The rotator cuff? Have you not heard it say, okay, we're going to put you on a rotator cuff program? It's not like the cuff of a sleep. Okay, then you sit there and just continue a circle. It is for muscles, all right? And there's an acronym for it. S-I-T-S. Okay? Subscapularis. Infraspinatus. Teres minor, which I believe is here. And supraspinatus. Uh, supraspinatus. 
Now we have two of them that have spi uh, S-P-I-N for spine, which is the spine of the scapula. Infraspinatus would be right below it. Supraspinatus would be right above it. And then we also have sub, which means like a submarine, it'd be beneath it, subscapularis. So, and Terry's minor, he just wanted to join us. All right. The rotator cuff is a group of muscles and tendons, or actually a group of tendons and muscles in the shoulder connected to the upper ball, arm of the humerus to the shoulder blade. So they all come off of the scapula, and they all attach to the humerus. Now, the rotator cuff tendons provide stability to the shoulder, and the muscles allow the shoulder to rotate. So, there's one, there's the second, two, here's three, and there's four. And as you see, they come and cover the humerus. Okay? So, in doing so, what their job is, is let's go back to the golf ball and the golf tee. So I'm sitting there waiting for the big, got the big, the big club, and I'm going to let the big dog bite. I'm going to hit this ball super hard. And I go back, and a gust of wind comes up and knocks the ball off of the tee. I can't do my job. Because why? The ball's not on the tee. It's not where it's supposed to be. Same with this. If the ball falls off the tee, okay, it can't do its job. So these are sort of like, not entirely, Lucy and Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown can't kick the football until Lucy holds it. She's hateful and she pulls it away every time. You never want your shoulder, your, your rotator cuff to be Lucy and pull the ball off the tee. But it happens. Okay? So... Each muscle of the rotator cuff inserts at the scapula and it has a tendon attached to the humerus and they form a cuff around the humerus. So there it is. Got it? Isn't it pretty? Okay. See the great big on on this picture, okay? This one up here. All the way at the top. See that great big thing that comes and meets with the, the clavicle? All right. What process is that? Starts with an A. That's the acromion process. So what's this other one? It's also a process. It's coming off. That's the coraco. The coraco process. Where that other ligament comes and attaches to the clavicle. Now... When you put those in here, there's the subscapularis. You can see the teres, the teres minor down at the bottom, the supraspinatus, and the infraspinatus. So they come around and they hold on to your bud. They hold it together. Okay. Now what happens if you heard, has anybody ever heard? I think I've torn a rotator cuff. Ever heard that? Well, that happens. You tear your rotator cuff. But you got to be more specific. To, to the layman, they're saying, well, I've got a rotator cuff tear. Okay, well, you've got four muscles. Which one is it? What do you mean, which one is it? Well, they, all four of them do different things. So which rotator cuff muscle did you tear? Now, if you completely tear this, it's muscle, right? What's going to happen to the muscle? If it's not being used, yeah, it goes away. Atrophy, and with atrophy comes contracture, and that means that this will shrink up. How are you going to get it if it shrinks up back to where it belongs? That's the thing. Yeah, so you need to take care of them rather quickly. Rotator cuff tear and injury tears. A rotator cuff tendon that's been weakened by age or wear and tear. Weakness in the arm and usually pain are the symptoms. So, yes, as we get older, our rotator cuff decides that I'm canceling out of this. I'm tired of working. 
So you can get tendonitis from repetitive overuse and over or repetitive use in overhead sports such as throwing tennis, volleyball, etc. Every now and then you just fade away, and I have to bring you back. All right, it causes painful strain injury. The rest, ice, pain relievers are pretty effective. All right, what what one are we on? This one. No, we don't want that. All right. So you can get a rotator cuff impingement. And the tendons of the rotator cuff are squeezed between the humerus and a nearby bone called the acromial. Now, we look at this fella right here. What bone, what muscle is this? Supra. Yeah, supraspinatus. I'm called a spinatus. But fine. Okay. Well, look. Look at what it does. It's, here's the clavicle. Here's the acromion process that meets the clavicle. It goes here, and it's got a tunnel. Now, what happens if we start getting tendonitis on this sucker? Tendonitis means, itis means what? Swollen. Something swollen. So, how is that going to affect the space that it has to go under? Gonna, yeah, it's going to come up to it. So you start getting impingement, and it gets squeezed by the acromion. And the symptoms and treatments of impingement are similar to tendonitis. You better get some rest, some anti-inflammatories, and you need to quit that overhead stuff. All right? You can get sub underneath the acromion, sub acromial bursitis, which is inflammation of the bursa that cushions the rotator cuff from the nearby bone or the acromion. So you got it right down here. You also have a bursa, which is a cushion. It sits there and it relieves, it uh, gives out synovial fluid, which is like putting WD-40 out there to keep it moving freely. If that gets inflamed, you need some anti-inflammatories, and you need some rest. So, how do you know which one it is that you have hurt, Sydney? That is probably one of the best things I've heard her say. Yes, go to the doctor. Okay. But if you're helping one of your pitchers, because you've got baseball, that's overhead. Oh, there's two baseball people here. You can come to us and say, I think they have a, a super spinatus problem because they can't empty the can. Would it? You've seen that? No. All right. Tomorrow you will. <laughs> Tomorrow not only will you learn which one does what, but you will actually do them on someone. All right. Fancy. Tomorrow's.